What's up guys? I am Ian and I just watched F1 Drive to Survive. I mean, that was insane. Netflix, you guys are doing great. I have some notes written down in my trusty notepad. Well, one of my nine trusty notepads. It's necessary. Now to start off, I have always been a fan of cars. Top Gear, the UK version, not the crappy American version, is still one of my favorite shows to binge watch. Yes, because I have every season, not just on Prime, but on my hard drive, that I can watch literally whenever I want. And I do all the time. But even though I am that much of a car guy, I've never really been a racing fan. I don't know what it is. That's a lie. I do know what it is. It's because I don't get the nitty gritty, the behind the scenes. I never really understood what went on behind the racetrack what's happening in their head 400 people behind them except for a pit crew why wow, i didn't understand any of this and i am so happy to be wrong about that because there is so much happening behind the scenes like this series f1 drive to survive is absolutely phenomenal disclaimer though because i wasn't a racing fan i knew literally no one's name none of the racers names none of the the coaches names none of the main guys names i knew all the teams i knew none of the names of the people except lewis hamilton and the only reason that i know his name and knew it long before i had ever watched this series 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 long before i ever watched this show is because of top gear i love how that happens but by the end of season one, I already have people that I love and hate. Now, coming from a purely creative standpoint, as someone who recently just learned the power of rotoscoping in After Effects, let me just tell you, I fully appreciate the beginning intro series. It's, it was, wow. Fully, fully support you continuing to do that, Netflix. Bravo. However, my first thought as a viewer, not critic, not creative, not cinematographer, not editor, but as a viewer, I never realized how quiet and contained everyone is over the intercoms. Like, not just the pit chief, the team lead, whatever he was called. Sorry guys, still figuring this out. Not just him, but the drivers themselves. Like, you just drove into a wall because of your teammates and you're literally just sitting there going, oh, sorry guys. Should have seen him. He was in my blind spot. Didn't mean to hit him. I'd be cursing up a fucking storm. Like, how does that happen? I mean, everyone is so composed over the intercoms. Like, hey guys, I'm sorry, but uh, there seems to be a fly on the track and it's a little distracting. And that's the reason that I came in last place, even though I started on pole position on the grid. And then the pit chief responds back with, hey, it's okay. We'll get him next time. What? If I was either one of them, I would have been yelling so fucking loud the other teams would have heard me in their intercoms and then it's the same thing when they win <laughs> great job guys we really pulled it together today really great team win <laughs> you said it we'll do it again next week too <laughs> no <laughs> Fuck yes we did it hell yes all of you guys you suck we won i'll see you next week in my rearview mirror once again before i go any further i want to thank today's sponsor See, the word freelance comes out of the period between the 14th and 16th centuries. And this is a time period you have to remember when mercenary knights, when they had no particular allegiances as mercenary knights never really did, but they would give their lance, their pledge to the prince, this the state, with the highest bid, uh, so to speak. So uh, they were referred to as freelancers by roughly the 19th century and uh, they would operate much like the you know the gunfighters of the American West the the slick gun slinging and just bang 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 shoot them up and I mean we're all familiar with this sort of Americanized just ugh. a freelancer today is anyone who uh, who works independently so to speak because well, I mean, let's face it, it, it would be a totally different story if someone went out on a horse with a lance. They'd be in a bit of trouble. 
Now, my second thought didn't really come until like four episodes in, mostly because I was just so entranced by everything that was happening through the first four episodes. There's like no women in this sport. And that kind of drives me crazy a little bit because it's like, yes, I get it. This has kind of been a guy's sport, a guy's world for a very long time, but it is now 2021. Well, okay, at this point, 2019, 2018, in this first season of the show, not of F1 race. How are there not any women drivers or pit crew or pit chiefs or pretty much anyone other than like a co-CEO, co-owner, co-team lead? Now this does come with parents allowing their baby daughters to go karting, start them when they're young, let them know their passion, and let them destroy these guys. Now here's the thing, the first season didn't just make me re-find my love of cars. It made me want to go racing again, like how I wanted to when I was a kid. And the best part for me about this emotion is that it didn't stop there. It made me want to go film and photograph racing because it encapsulated pretty much everything about the cars that I enjoy from both past and present and what it could possibly mean for the future if I kept this notion in front of me and allowed it to become a part of me. Very similar to how I actually did these photos about a year and a half ago. Out of nowhere, I just saw my father-in-law's car sets and decided to take photos. Yes, those were all toys. Those were not actual cars. I enjoy doing that kind of stuff. And this show, this first season, brought me back into that. So, I'm gonna be doing more of that soon. Now, truth be told, I do have an issue with all streaming services. It's not their issue, it's mine. Because I have OCD, I will not start a new show unless there are at least two seasons. Because God forbid I love it and I binge the first season and there isn't a second, oh, all hell is breaking loose. But thankfully, this had two seasons. At the end of this first season of F1 Drive to Survive, I'm not really sold yet on if I am actually a fan. Not the show, I am a fan of the show. I, I don't know yet if I'm a fan of the racing as a whole. So I guess I'm gonna have to watch the second season and find out, and I'll be back with that. What's up guys, I am Ian. Why am I pointing to you when I'm saying I? Maybe I'll just like walk in frame. Yeah. What's up guys, I am Ian. Welcome back to the channel. Why am I saying welcome back? <sighs> Apparently I'm Hook. Battling against Robin Williams. Hook. 